hello and welcome back. Welcome back to my thrifty and frugal kitchen here in Brittany in Northwest France. And here's where I share our thrifty tips and hints and living advice about how to live a really good life on a tight budget, not just here in France, but anywhere really. And lots of times I share some really good cooking advice. Well, I think it's really cooking good cooking advice. That's personal opinion. But anyway, today, by special request, because I, I am Cornish, I grew up in Cornwall, it's where I'm from. Today I'm cooking Cornish pasties. They're not Cornish to their lesser in Cornwall. Are they Cornish if they're made by Cornish hands? Anyway, today I'm making Cornish pasties. So I'm just going to go through the ingredients to begin with. So let's have a look at here what I need. Obviously, I've got potatoes, onion, swede, uh, beef, loads of beef. This in the UK, you can see by the way that the grain of the meat goes this way and the way it's cut. This is often known as flank. In the UK, it's known as skirt. But here in France, it's bavette, and it's a very popular steak. And this amount of this uh, bavette steak here cost me five euros. The Swede was about one and a half euros. The bag of onions, two euros sixty. Sack of potatoes here, about three and a half euros. So that goes inside the pasty. And then I will make my pastry which is simply flour, cooking margarine. You can use butter and lard if you want to. Of course you can. If you're in the UK, you would just use any cooking margarine. And obviously plenty of salt and pepper to go into your pasties. So that's the starting point. That's the ingredients that I have. And next I'm gonna show you how I make my pastry. So I'll let my husband swing round to the pastry machine. This is how I make my pastry. Now normally you would put the fat and the flour into a mixing bowl and rub it in with your fingers. I have arthritis in my thumbs, so to do that for me is extraordinarily painful. So you can make pastry in a food processor if you have one. So into here has gone 600 grams of plain flour and 300 grams of margarine. If you are using lard and butter, Go ahead if you if that what you like to do. It'd be 150 grams of butter, 150 grams of lard. But me, I'm just using cooking margarine. Quick, cheap and simple. Into here as well has gone 10 grams of salt, which I think that's a lot, but pastry doesn't work without salt. The water that you're gonna need to go with is run your tap, you want it cold. It's even better if you can leave it into the, in the fridge and chill it. So this is gonna be noisy. And let's show you me making my pastry in my food processor. There we go, that's it. So I'm going to get myself a quick spoon. One moment, please. Real life this, we don't have an assistant. So there we go. To show you it inside here, perfect breadcrumbs. Absolutely perfect breadcrumbs. Now, you can take that out, put it into a mixing bowl and add in water. But why? You've got a machine to do it. I'm gonna switch this on, add my water. When it turns into one great big thump, thump, lump, it's pastry. <laughs> Pastry. There we go. Now, if it's too wet, you're just going to add more flour. If it's too dry, you're just going to add more water. Here we go. Pastry. I'm sure people watching this would say I'd much prefer to do it by hand. Well, 
I'd love to do it by hand. I'd love to have thumbs without arthritis, but there we go. So let's show you my pastry right now. There we go. Pastry. Bits of it is a bit wet, so I will add a bit more flour. But then that needs to be chilled for at least one hour. And that is how I make my pastry in the food processor. I must add for the amount of pasties I'm going to make today, because this is a batch cook for me today, I will make another amount exactly the same as this. And the great thing about pastry, if you don't use it all up, you just stick it in a bag, pop it in the freezer, and there you are, you've got pastry for another time. So that is how I make my pastry in the food processor. And next, I'll show you the next stage of my making pasties. Well, I'm really sorry that you can't see me, but this is the important stuff you need to see right here. So this in camera shot right now, let's get that loosened down a bit. I'll be doing this DIY style right now. So here we are. You can see I've rolled out a piece of pastry, a bit bigger than my hand in a circle. This here's about 200 grams of pastry. And let's start adding to this. I had handfuls. So I add a handful of potatoes, a bit more, handful of potatoes, handful of sweet, handful of sweet, handful of onions. And these are all finely diced already. And the good thing about making your, leaving your pastry to sit for at least an hour, and a handful of beef on top here. So you can see it, my pastry is there. I have used a pastry brush and water around the edge. I've seasoned this well, plenty of salt and pepper. Pasty is a bland and horrible thing without plenty of seasoning. Plenty of black pepper on there. White pepper, is, if it's your decision to use white pepper, go ahead. Now, this is a bit different because I normally crimp towards me. So I'm going to crimp away from me today. So that'll be a bit different, won't it? I'm doing it that way so you, my lovelies, can see it. So I'm squishing it down. I'm just checking you can see it. Yep. It takes two hands to crimp a pasty. Twist it and pull it. Twist it and pull it. Twist it and my thumb stays in the crimp. My thumb stays in the crimp. Thumb in it, twist it, pull it down, thumb in the crimp. Twist it, two fingers, pull it down, thumb in the crimp. There you go. I normally do this so quickly I don't think about it. Thumb in the crimp. There we are. One pasty. I'm just going to pop that to one side and I'm going to do all of that again so you can see it once more. Flour my board, take 200 grams of pastry, sorry you can't see me, you don't need to see me, you need to see me making the pasty. I'm going to roll it out, turning it over, I want it bigger than my hand but not much bigger. of my hand. I'm going to use my pastry brush to wet around the edges for where I will stick it together and I'll start my handfuls again. Handful of potatoes, handful of onion, handful of sweet and handful of beef. A smaller handful of beef. Put in as much beef steak as you possibly can afford, is what I say. As much as you like, or you can possibly afford. Plenty of salt and pepper. And as I said to you, this is a bit strange for me, because I'm crimping away from myself, not to myself, but I normally do. I think I'm doing as best I can. I want the pastry to be nice and stretchy. So gather it all in. Get it all inside. It's not 
the best looking pasties. I am by no means a champion pasty maker. There are women across Cornwall who do this for a living. So there you go. See, the size of my hands. So two hands to crimp it. Twist it, put your thumb in. Twist it, put your thumb in. And it might break as mine just did there. Twist it, put your thumb in. Twist it, put your thumb in. Twist it, two fingers. Twist it, put your thumb in. Not the world's best crimper. That's not a neat and tidy crimp. That's not gonna, that's not gonna win any village competitions, that one. So there you go. Two pasties made. I'm going to glaze these and get them in an oven at 165 for one hour. Just turn my camera off and you'll see me look. Turning my camera off. Well, that's 10 pasties made. Now I need to get them glazed. So people are like, well, what does that mean? So I'm going, to, I'm going through this quite carefully today because people are like, what does that actually look like? So I'm going to turn my camera down now and I've got two beaten eggs. I'm going to glaze 10 pasties before I get them in the oven. So I've heated my oven to 165. These will be baked in two batches because I've got 10 and I don't have an oven big enough for this. And they will take one hour to cook. It's okay, actually. I'm gonna, you're going to lose me now because the camera's going to go down. I'm going to go down to the pasties. There they go. There they go. To the pasties. Now. It is absolutely okay to take the pasties as they are with on the tray, pop the tray into the freezer and freeze them like that. When they are frozen solid, take them off the tray and pop them straight into the freezer. Alternatively, you can do as I'm going to do now, you can bake all of them and then you can freeze them, which is what I'm going to do. So here we go, glazing 10 pasties, absolutely all over 10 pasties. I'm just going to do one to show you and then I will turn that camera off because you don't need to see it. So quite thick with the egg all over it. A really good looking pasty when it's glazed. So there we go. One pasty glazed. Let's do one more. Brush it with the egg, beaten egg all over. There we go. Two pasties glazed and I'll turn that off whilst I go and glaze the other eight. So here's some more fresh out of the oven. So that's three, seven, three more in the oven cooking. Don't eat them when they're straight out of the oven. Burn your mouth. So here we are with the first four that I cooked. I always think it's nice. See, what do they look like inside? Let's take this one for example. Ready? I'm going to cut it open. There we go. They're very hot, so I'm going to lift them up so I don't burn myself. And that's it. What they look like inside. So, I really hope that you get to make your own Cornish pasties. They're very simple to make. If you want to freeze them, just wrap them up in foil, pop them gently in the freezer, defrost them when, when you want them. It's nice to warm them in the foil as well and eat them another day. Thank you very much. Now, if you like my recipes, if you like my thrifty and frugal ideas, Make sure you give it a thumbs up. It's really important to some number thingy going on on YouTube that I really don't understand. But it's very important that you like it. Even better if you can leave a comment. And on top of that, if you really want to make sure you do not miss any of these videos in the future, make sure you subscribe. Thank you so much. And come back again to our thrifty and frugal corner of Brittany here in North West France.
Thank you very much and bye-bye.